Before we start, I need to talk about what I just witnessed. I went outside for the first time in months. Then the sun hit me like a flashbang. So I'm standing there blinking like a Skyrim NPC loading in. And then I look over to my left and my neighbor is in his yard watering his lawn with a blue bottle of Gatorade. And it's not like he's just pouring extra Gatorade he had out. He had literal packs of these things behind him just waiting to be used. Just straight electrolytes dripping into the grass. I didn't have the mental capacity to unpack any of that. So I turned around, went upstairs and started to make this video instead. So let's get into 23 real ways to reduce your input delay. So go ahead and join my Discord. The link will be in the description. Once you're in my Discord, it'll Look like this head over to the youtube tweaks channel here on the left go ahead and click on that at the bottom here you'll find the new file that says 23 real ways to reduce input delay it's not in here right now because i haven't uploaded this video yet but as soon as you're watching this the file will already be down there so go ahead and download it once you have it go ahead and extract it put it on your desktop open the file up and you'll see how everything laid out really easy for us here i have a disclaimer file in here first which you can click readme it's just telling you guys that everything we use in this video is completely open source you can right click and click edit on everything you see i also let you guys know you're free to take a restore point if you'd like everything in this video is completely safe you won't need to restore to a restore point but i know it makes some people feel better so i wanted to throw that reminder in here but we can go ahead and close out of this and then go back i have this one listed as 0.5 and not included on the actual optimizations but it's more just a safety check to make sure you guys have all your DirectX and runtimes installed or if you do have them installed already it never hurts to just reinstall them make sure you get a fresh slate so go ahead and click into this i have DirectX and visuals separated here we can do DirectX first so click into here i have a source file in here of where i got these files from if you want to download them yourself however to save time i have everything pre-downloaded in this folder so this one that says double click me literally all you need to do is double click it it'll say welcome to setup for directx click accept and then just spam next this is going to automatically reinstall or install your directx components directx is basically what handles graphics performance and most game features it's kind of like the bridge that lets your game render frames and use your gpu properly so of course we always want to make sure we have these installed most games will install these once you're done go ahead and click finish go back one go to visuals same thing i have a source here of where i got these files from if you want to download it yourself the bat here it's completely open source all you need to do is double click on install all it's going to automatically start to install all your visuals. The visual C++ is responsible for handling tons of apps. If a game or program was made using a certain C++ version, it literally won't launch unless that matching runtime is installed. So this just takes care of all those compatibility issues. That way you won't run into any errors opening any app or anything like that. And one app we're going to use today does require these. So go ahead and go back one and then we're going to go ahead and start reducing our input delay. The first one here says optimize windows timer. By default, the windows timer is trash and it actually butchers your 0.1% lows and your 1% lows as well as increases your input delay. So this is going to fix it. That way you fix all those problems in one. I have a couple files in here. The first one says put this in shell startup. So go ahead and double click in this folder. Anything in shell startup will start up when your computer starts up. So if you come down here and type in startup, you'll see apps in here. So set timer resolution is already in there for me. So all you're going to do is copy this file here. Press control C or right click and click copy. Go to shell startup and then paste it in here. So you can see mine's already in here. So we're good. For this to work right, what we need to do is still go back one. Go to put this in C drive. You'll see another set time resolution file in here. Copy this one as well. Go to C drive and paste it in here. You'll see that I already have mine in here, so I'm good to go. What that's going to do is start timer resolution every time you turn on your computer, and there's a little more configuring we have to do to make sure this is working how we want. Go ahead and go back to the optimized Windows timer folder, double click on Power Run, and then click File, and then allow command line. Power Run is an application that lets us run things at the highest permission level. That way, you don't run into any permission issues. So once you've done this, go ahead and close out of it. The timer fix bad in here is, of course, open source. You can run these individually if you'd like to, or use the bad in here I have to save time. What we want to do is drag and drop it over Power Run. That's going to make sure it runs it at the highest permission level. You don't run into any permission issues. The final thing we want to do to configure our timer is go to device manager. You can see here in the name, I say disable HPET and system timer. Go ahead and open up device manager and do that exact thing. Expand it to make it easier to see. Go down to system devices and expand it. Find high precision event timer, right click, click disable. Go down to the bottom, find system timer, right click and click disable. I have a video where I go in depth of exactly why we're doing this. To sum it up very briefly, basically the idea is that we want our hardware to give true one-to-one -one input and we don't want the OS control in this timer. This is going to significantly reduce our input delay and fix our 0.1 percent lows being so bad. Like I said though, check out that video if you're interested in exactly why this works. I go in depth and show you guys the DSCT table code on your actual motherboard to give you guys kind of the science of why we're doing this. Go ahead and go back one, go to USB ports. I'm going to make this super brief. Basically what you want to make sure is all your devices that you care about latency for. For example, your mouse and keyboard. Make sure in the USB 3.0 or 3.1 ports on your motherboard. These ports will usually be blue or red. It'll also be labeled with 3.0 and sometimes it'll have an SS there for super speed, meaning that those are your good ports. Just don't plug anything into your gray ports and you'll be good to go. So once you move those things around physically, go ahead and close out of this. Go back, go to import power plan. Of course, everything's completely open source again. This is just pulling my power plan from my GitHub. Once you're ready to import it, double click on it. It's going to import automatically. It's the import science power plan. Go ahead and type in edit power plan here. 
Go to power options, make sure the selected power plant is mine. This power plant is by far the best on the internet. And again, I have another video where I go in depth of how this power plant is actually the best and show the benchmarks of this power plan versus all the other popular power plans. This power plan will literally reduce your system interrupts in half. So I'd highly recommend you use it. If you guys aren't comfortable with using a custom power plan at the bare minimum, make sure you're on high performance. Go ahead and go back one and then go to NVIDIA settings. This file just says right click desktop, NVIDIA control panel. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Go ahead and right click your desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel. The most important thing we're going to do is go to adjust image settings with preview and make sure it's on this middle option here. You see the advanced 3D image settings. If it's on this top one or if it's on this bottom one, it's not going to use any of the custom settings we're using in here. It's very important you do that. Then go to manage 3D image settings. Basically, we're just going to turn everything off in here for the most part. All these top ones just turn off. You guys can just basically copy the settings I have here. I'll go over the most important ones. Low latency mode, make sure this is on on. If you're on a very old GPU, turn this on ultra. Monitor technology, fixed refresh. This is an important one that most people get tripped up on. OpenGL GDI compatibility make sure this is on auto. I know there's an option in here that says before performance and on paper that does sound better, but games are not optimized for this and it actually worsens your FPS. So just leave this on auto. We can let the hardware do what it needs to do. Power management mode. This one we do want on perform maximum performance. Preferred refresh rate, highest available. The next important ones are tri-linear optimization on, verted optimization auto, and vertical sync off. Click apply in the bottom right once you've done those settings. The next important thing we're going to do is click on desktop and then make sure enable developer settings is checked. Then go to manage GPU performance counters. Click allow access to the GPU performance counters to all users and then click apply in the bottom right. That is going to restart your graphics driver so your screen will go black just for a few seconds and then it'll come right back on. Once you're done with this, go ahead and close out of the NVIDIA control panel, go back one, go to refresh rate. I know this one's simple, but you'd be surprised how many people actually overlook this. Double click into display settings, scroll down, go to advanced display and make sure your monitor is set to its maximum refresh rate. Now, contrary to this, if you have multiple monitors like me, you want all your other monitors to be on a base refresh rate like 60. If you have like four monitors and they're all 240 Hz, that is going to significantly increase your input delay so make sure you only have one monitor running at its maximum speed once you've configured this go back go back again this file in here is win32 prior separation click into it again it's completely open source this basically just changes how windows balances foreground versus background processes the value we're setting right here gives more priority to the game you have open that way windows isn't eating up those resources you should have allocated to your game and using it on background processes instead we don't want that and that's why we're doing this Go ahead and close out of it, double click on it, click yes, click OK. That'll be applied on the next reboot. Go ahead and go back one, go to MSI Utility here. You may need to run this file as admin for it to launch. So right click and click run as administrator. If for whatever reason it's still not launching, you may need to grab the file from the GitHub. So to search up MSI Utility GitHub and download it if you are having issues opening it. Go ahead and expand it, that way we can see everything. What we're looking for is our GPU. You can see this one says NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5080. So that's what you're looking for. Your GPU might be different, you might see like 2070, 3060, something along those lines, but go ahead and find it. Make sure the MSI box is checked right here. Do we want that to be checked? Then go to the right, interrupt priority. Make sure this is on undefined. So like I've been saying throughout this video already, we want our hardware to give true one-to-one -one input, do exactly what it needs to do. That's going to make sure we have the lowest amount of delay possible. If we change this interrupt and say, hey, I'm going to force you to do this, then it's going to really mess up your interrupts and increase your input delay. So just leave this on undefined and let the GPU do what it needs to do. Click apply here in the top right. That way those changes apply. And then you can close out of MSI utility and then go back one. Go to keyboard optimization here. And then I have another open source file in here. This is just going to enhance the typing experience in Windows and make your keyboard feel so much more responsive. Once you're ready to run it, close out of this, double click on the bat, it'll automatically run. Go back one, go to mouse optimization. I do have a warning in here that says don't run this if you're on a laptop. If you use a trackpad, it is gonna make the trackpad not work. So if you're on a laptop and you don't use a trackpad, you can run this. However, if you use a trackpad at all, just don't run it. These two files are completely open source. I'll pull them up for you guys here. Basically what we're doing is just disable mouse acceleration in every possible way. That way your mouse is literally getting true one-to-one -one input. It's gonna make your mouse feel incredible. So once you're ready to run this, close out of these and just run both. Both. Run the mouse tweaks here. It'll automatically close out when it's done. And then run the mouse tweaks and fix here. Click yes. Click OK. That'll apply on the next reboot. Once you're ready, go back. Go to registry tweaks here. Again, you can right click and click edit. Do everything it's doing. Basically, we're just disabling some telemetry and useless thing Windows has. If you guys are curious about what each line of code does, I have a brief description of what each thing does here. We're also setting the right priorities on the back end. That way your CPU and GPU are running at its maximum potential. Once you guys are ready to run the tweak, go ahead and double click on it. Click yes. Click OK. And that'll be applied on the next reboot. Go ahead and go back one and then go to MSI Afterburner. I have the installer in here for already go ahead and double click on it make sure norton 360 for gamer is unchecked this is pure bloat and you don't need this click install and then click ok click next click i accept 
click next. Reaver Tuner can be good for performance monitoring. However, we don't need it for what we're doing. So uncheck this, click next, click next again, and then click install. This is gonna install MSI Afterburner. Once you get to this screen, uncheck show readme and click run MSI Afterburner. Go ahead and click finish on this. And then we'll be met with a screen like this. MSI Afterburner is gonna let us give our GPU consistent performance. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we need to do to configure that. Go ahead and click the settings here on the top left and then check these three boxes. Unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitoring, and force constant voltage. Then on unlock voltage control, make sure it's set to third party. Below that, change ARM startup weekly to never. And then these top two boxes, make sure both of these are unchecked. These settings are just gonna give us deeper voltage control as well as stabilize the voltage. That way it's not bouncing around while you're playing. Once you've configured this, go to user interface here, click on this, and then click MSI Cyborg Afterburner Skin Red. Click apply here, and then click yes on the prompt that comes up here. That's gonna restart MSI Afterburner. And then you should be met with a screen like this. So what we're gonna do is slide core voltage all the way up, slide power limit all the way up. If you have temp limit unlocked, just go ahead and slide it all the way up as well. A safe value for everybody should be around 40 and then plus 400. This will work on pretty much every GPU in existence. This is barely even an overclock, but it is gonna push a little bit more out of your GPU. That way you're getting more performance. You can Google a safe value for your GPU. For example, a 5080 can do way more than this. This is just a universal value for every GPU, even old ones. So for example, what I'm gonna do for mine is do 315 and then do 2000. Like I said, do not copy what I'm doing here. You can Google a safe value for your GPU or stick with the safe values that I gave you for every GPU if you'd like. What we're gonna do then is uncheck auto here. That way the fan speed unlocks and then type in 70 here. This is gonna give you a static fan speed and that way your temps are gonna be more regulated. If you're comfortable with it, you can go up to 80. I wouldn't exceed 80. We don't want your fans running at full speed all the time. What we're gonna do next is click on this window startup button down here. So it's highlighted red. That's gonna make sure your overclock settings here apply every time your computer starts up. You'll never see MSI Afterburner or this GUI here. So don't worry. You don't need to open it. You don't need to have it running in the background or anything like that. There's a single service responsible for doing this in the background and it's always gonna be running. So then click the checks box here. You should hear your fan speed start to spin up. Click on the save button here on the right and then click on the profile one. Profile one is the one that will load automatically when your computer starts up using this setting here. Once you've saved it to profile one, click the lock button here. That's gonna make sure you don't accidentally make any changes to the profile. Once you're done with the MSI Afterburner, you can close out of this. Go ahead and go back one and then go to visual windows tweaks. You guys probably already have this done, but I do wanna mention it because it can make a difference. You don't want all the visual windows bloat here. I'd recommend just unchecking everything. I have show shadows under windows checked, show thumbnails instead of icons checked, show windows content while dragging checked, and then smooth edges of screen fonts checked. Go ahead and click apply on the bottom right and then click OK. This is just going to make sure we don't have any visual bloat running on our computer. Click OK on this, go back one, go ahead and go to uninstall game bar. Obviously, if you guys use game bar, don't do this. This is just calling on every package that game bar uses and removing it from the system. Like I said, if you guys are using game bar, do not do this, but game bar does make FPS a little bit worse. So if you know you don't use it, go ahead and double click on this. It'll run and automatically uninstall game bar for you. Once it's ran, go ahead and go back one, go to network settings here. I have a device manager shortcut in here. Go ahead and click into this. Scroll down to network adapters here and then click into this. Find the network adapter you're using, which in my case is my only one, my ethernet controller here. Go ahead and double click in this and then click power management here and uncheck allow the computer to turn off this device to save power. Obviously we don't want windows turning off our ethernet controller. Then go to advanced to get the lowest amount of delay on our network adapter. We're basically just gonna disable any kind of offloading or any kind of power saving feature in the network adapter. For example, ARP offload, disable this. Obviously energy efficient ethernet, that's just awful. Disable this. Flow control, gigabit light, green ethernet, power saving stuff, disable all of this. Interrupt moderation, very important. Make sure this is disabled. Like I said, any kind of offloading stuff, disable this. So IPv4 checks some offload, disable. These two offload settings, disable. And it's offload, disable. Power saving mode, disable. Next important ones are all the UDP offloading ones. You might only have two in here, or if you have four like me, disable all of these. Those are the most important ethernet controller settings here. So once you do that, click okay. That is gonna restart your network adapter briefly. So you may lose internet for just a few seconds. But click okay, and then you can close out a device manager here. Go ahead and go back one, and then go to startup apps here. I have two files in here, which we're gonna use both. Open up task manager first, and then click on the little startup icon over here, or you can click this button and it'll say startup apps there. Basically anything in here, just disable it. If you have something in here like set timer resolution from earlier, of course we wanna leave that on. So if it's related to a tweak, just leave it on. But anything bloat, like Still Series GG, Riot Games Client, Epic Games Client, Blizzard, EA, anything like that, just disable all of it. We don't want 100 apps starting up when our computer starts up. That's just gonna weigh down the system and significantly increase your input delay. Once you have everything turned off, close out of this, and we're gonna open up auto runs. This is basically just an advanced version of what we were just doing. It's gonna show you everything that starts up when your computer starts up. I wouldn't recommend just going in here willy-nilly and unchecking everything as you can risk breaking something. You see all the things I have unchecked here, just normal apps. If you see things like this that say Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, go ahead and uncheck these. If you do see something yellow like this, Microsoft Edge, that means that Windows is still calling on it to start up, but that it can't find the file, which most likely means it's either uninstalled or that file was just moved. So if something is yellow, feel free to just go ahead and uncheck it. But scrolling down, anything that says like Google Chrome or anything you know you don't need, go ahead and uncheck that. Depending on how bloated your system is, you may have a lot of things in here you can uncheck. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is go to 
schedule tasks here at the top click options here and then make sure hide microsoft entries is unchecked and hide windows entries is unchecked as well it's going to show you all the schedule tasks on your system here i'm on my custom os signs os so a lot of this stuff is pre deep loaded for me however most of everything in here you can uncheck or just full-on delete you guys can see the ones i have here which are the ones you want to keep anything other than these is pretty much safe to delete or uncheck feel free to go ahead and go through them anything you know you don't need uncheck it or just make it match mine once you're done with that go back go back again and then go to bio settings here i have a basic bio settings text here with a brief description of what every bio setting does you guys can read this and apply these settings in your bios i have them separated by am5 and intel these are safe settings and they're going to work for everybody the only exception to this is if you're on a laptop laptops have really bad thermals so i wouldn't really do this if you are on a laptop the most important thing is make sure xmp or expo is on for amd or intel this is going to make sure you're getting full utilization out of your ram that way your cpu and ram can talk to each other faster everything else is very important i highly recommend you guys do these feel free to go to your bios now do them come back to this video or you can do them at the end go ahead and close out of this go back i have another file in here called disable bloat services click into this again it's completely open source these are just bloat services taking up resources on the system that you do not need all you need to do is double click on it it'll automatically run and disable all those services in the file i have a brief description of the actual service name and then what it does the text below that is what's actually disabling that service i can guarantee you guys do not need any of these services but for whatever reason if you do want to revert i have a revert cmd in here which is basically just going to re-enable all those services but once you've disabled them go back go to drive optimization and then i have another device manager shortcut in here double click into this expand disk drives and then double click into your drive you can do all of them if you have multiple drives click policies and make sure both of these are checked this is basically just going to let our drive cache data quicker it's going to make it slightly faster once you've configured this click ok close out of this and then go back one this, is, this one's really important and a lot of people overlook this but it's disabling all your overlays i just have a text in here that's telling you to do that i'll show you one example from discord so for example if you click user settings and you go to game overlay here you want to make sure enable overlay or enable a legacy overlay or any kind of overlay settings is unchecked now this does not just apply to discord if you use still series or any other app which i don't recommend you guys use but if for whatever reason you are using those apps make sure overlay is disabled for every app you use this includes steam and nvidia as well once you've configured this for all your apps you can go ahead and close out of them go ahead and go back in the file this one says game mode plus hags click on settings this one's a little more simple but it is so simple that it's often overlooked make sure game mode is on this is going to make sure your computer is not going to be doing random stuff in the background then go to graphics make sure optimization for windows games is checked while we're in here and then go to advanced graphics settings you'll see hardware accelerated gpu scheduling here if you guys are lazy and don't want to benchmark it per game just leave this on if you're on a 50 series you want this on anyway that way you can take advantage of the dlss plus frame gen however i do want to mention this setting can be game and gpu dependent if you guys really want to squeeze the most fps out of a certain game i'd recommend you benchmark this on and off on that game on your own computer every computer gets different results every game gets different results so there's no universal setting for this that i can tell you guys however if you want to play it safe i get that not everybody wants to benchmark games just turn this on and you'll be good to go go ahead and close out of this go back one go to nvidia profile inspector here once you're in here double click nvidia profile inspector this is going to open it up with a custom config i have preloaded the main thing we're going to want to do is scroll down and go to five common cuda force p2 state make sure this is off and then go down to our bar feature make sure this is enabled our bar options make sure it's on the one that says red dead redemption 2 and then our bar size limit make sure it's also the one that says red dead redemption 2 this is going to max the memory chunk the gpu can grab from the system ram using rebar and this does actually help in a lot of games go ahead and click apply changes here in the top right once you've done that click x go back one i have a file in here called honest hardware talk and i'll make this really simple basically the idea is if you're on a really old and crappy mouse or keyboard your delay is going to feel like crap no matter what you want peripherals that have a one millisecond response time or even less i have links in here to some popular peripherals that have incredibly low response times but for example if you're on like a five dollar mouse from amazon odds are that that mouse has literally 10 milliseconds of delay just built into it just because it has such crappy components so that's instantly 10 milliseconds of delay you just can't get around and you would literally get 10x less delay instantly just by upgrading your mouse so i'd recommend you guys do your research on what components you have check the delay of it or just buy something that is guaranteed low delay but go ahead and go back one and for the last optimization to reduce your guys input delay i have advanced optimizations here it's a link to my website where you guys can find the most advanced optimizations on the planet things like ram overclocking custom ram timings a full cpu overclock and things like that can all be found on my website these things are the most important things you can possibly do to reduce your input delay to as close to zero as you can possibly get but if this video did help you guys out like and subscribe it helps me out so much leave a comment on what you guys want to see next if you have any issues or questions leave a comment down below or dm me on discord i love talking to you guys i'll help you guys out we're all in this together to learn more i love you guys and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day peace